The fly we're going to tie today is the handlebar. It's a good salmon pattern for pinks off the beach. It's supposed to imitate a shrimp. Uh, the hook we're going to use today is a number 8 streamer. And uh, to remove the barb, which is barbless in BC, a good little tip for that is to pinch it in the vise here. So we'll put the hook in like that, give a little squeeze, we'll click there, barb is gone. Oh, nice. So we'll put that in like that. You can tie it on a number six as well, but number eight works perfect off the uh, beach for these pinks. They seem to really like that size and it's a great little pattern. Okay, so we'll use a uh, pink thread. I got a 6 o 6-aught pink thread. So we'll start that off. Kind of wrap it line like that. Then I like to put a good base down. Cover the whole shank of the hook right pretty close to where the hook band starts. And that's just so the material doesn't spin on the shank as you tie it. So the first material, I always start with the tail first. So it's a pink, fla uh, pink flashaboo. Right. And uh, it's a great tail pattern. You don't need too many strands on there because you don't want it to be too crazy, but it's supposed to imitate the legs of a shrimp. Hmm. The head of the hook, I want to keep the body as even as I can. So you don't want a big fat ass on this fly. You want to keep it, <laughs> <laughs> want to keep it even as you can and fold it in half. So you got half going one way, half the other. And you want to start at the head of the hook, pull back and wrap down the shank. Oh, nice. Look like that. So take it where the hook bend starts, right about there. You can trim that to length. Usually about half the shank of the hook is about the length you want, right about there. So that's the tail? Tail, yeah. And I usually don't cut it blunt. I kind of do it in stages, like cut it a little bit here, a little bit back. Oh, okay. It yeah. So it's not even, it's kind of irregular. Yeah, it looks more natural yeah. that hey. way. It doesn't look like a big Sorry. flat tail there. <laughs> so wrap the thread back to the head of the hook here. And then we use something called edge bright or mm. laser wrap is the other term for it. And this is for the body of the hook. Mm. What I do is a V at the start, kind of point towards the eye of the hook. It helps to kind of lead material in there. So kind of got a little point like that. Yep. And start again at the head, so you want to keep that body even as you can. How tight do you wrap those threads? Is it pretty tight? This one's pretty tight, okay. yeah. So as I'm tightening it, I'm pulling this back because I want this to stay on top of the fly. Mm -hmm. If you don't pull back, the material will kind of spin around right. and it looks pretty crappy. You okay. want to keep it tight, so I'll pull back as I'm going... And keep it on top of the fly? And on top of the fly as well, okay. yeah. Take about the same place where the tail was started there. Again, I'll wrap it forward again. It's nice and even. Make sure it's secured down there nice. A few more wraps. I'll put tinsel on there and it helps oh, yes. underneath the laser wrap to really pop in mm -hmm. the water there mm -hmm. like when the, the sun shines. Shine, yeah. It yeah. does, yeah. yeah. It shines really good down there. So mm -hmm. I'll cut off a bit of tinsel. I start with the gold side up. So if you do gold side up, it means you start wrapping, the silver side will come through. So tie it in the back, and then trim the excess off there. Wrap it back again to the front, thread to the front of the fly. Okay, now I can start wrapping this forward. <clears throat> I usually wrap it, if I'm going clockwise around here, I'll wrap this the other direction. Mm. Just to trap it better when you go to the top end. So you wrap that as a solid then? There's no gaps between your wraps? Exactly, yeah, okay. very tight. And you'll notice as you're tying it, it'll start to kind of bunch. When it starts to bunch, just kind of give it a little pull and it'll straighten everything out. Keep going forward, pull a little tighter, forward again. That point there, you want to crowd the eye either because you don't In behind it and then a few wraps in front and it's really secured in there it's not going to go anywhere okay and then cut off the excess now it's time to time the the, the, the uh, laser wrap so since it went clockwise this way I want to go counterclockwise so I will be going this direction and this you want to pull tight as you wrap and then even wraps you don't want to some Any 
tie it in behind the material. Two or three wraps. I'm going to tie or wrap in front of the material as well again. Careful not to crowd the eye. <clears throat> and you can cut this off right about there. Nice. And then just to make it nice and pretty, you can squash down that little tag there. Make a nice little head on the fly. You can also tie this fly with different colors. Like some guys like to use purple. Blue works well. Mm. Green, different colors as well. So just something a bit different. Blue is very popular as well. Popular thing too is to use a chartreuse head. Guys used to like to do that too as well. So it's a pink body and a chartreuse head. So to whip finish, you grab your whip finish tool like that and you thread there. And this little hook here grabs the thread turn it so it's horizontal and you push the bottom right to the fly and just kind of wrap it around like that. Mm. Just go around four or five times, go up like this, I used ah, to do it a couple slick. times. Okay. Okay. It's not going to go anywhere, take thread, cut it. You really want to make sure that it's not going to fall apart after a few fish. I put a bit of head cement onto the material or into the uh, thread I should say. There you go. That is your finished handlebar. Nice. Perfect salmon pattern for pinks off the beaches on Vancouver Island. Hey, right on. Good luck.